Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and with me in the Rabbit Hole studio today, she is an accomplished actor slash filmmaker. She's the writer and co-director of the indie feature Three Bound, which we found at the Soho International Film Festival, Miss Kate Forsats. Welcome, Kate. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming. So thanks for uh, schlepping to Brooklyn. We always appreciate it. I live down the street, so e- <laughs> no schlepping required. You might be the closest <laughs> guest we've ever had. We've had people from all over the world, but it's nice when we get. Uh... Now, are you a Brooklyn? Are you a Brooklyn person? Like I live in Brooklyn, but I'm a Jersey person. Oh, I see. Yeah. So well, we we won't hold it against you. Ouch. <laughs> There's always a Jersey jab. <laughs> uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, anyway, let's talk about. Uh, I want to talk about the film because I saw I had the good fortune of seeing the film, and we talked to you at uh, on the red carpet of Soho. Uh, That's right. Lindsay That's Astor right. interviewed you guys there, uh, you and your partner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to talk to you before we get into all that. I want to talk to you about you and just kind of see uh, how you got into this whole uh, filmmaking and acting thing and uh, what is your uh, what is your origin story, so to speak? So I was prepping for this and I was thinking about it and I'm like, where did I start? And I started in New Jersey. I actually like begged my mom to take me to an acting class in New Jersey and started from there and then did all the things that you do with headshots and I think my first audition was probably the most horrifying thing <laughs> that I ever did um, but uh, I just had a knack for it and enjoyed it and said I'm gonna do this and I uh, studied at Maggie Flanagan studio in New York City Meisner and started working and just kind of found my little groove as an actress and um, I, I went to school for writing, actually. So that's kind of where that happened. And I would write short films. And I wrote, like, my first feature was probably, like, 450 pages <laughs> because I had Epic. a lot to say, you know. Um, but obviously still yet to be produced. <laughs> It'll be produced as a miniseries yes, uh, later on a, this year. You know, made for TV yeah. film. <laughs> Um, so, and it, um, Five days, ten days. And and is this your first feature? It's my first feature. All right. So yeah. um, this it is w- not five hundred pages. It is not yes, five hundred no, pages. No. Um, uh, if it is, you've cut it down significantly <laughs> for the for the feature cut that I saw. Anyway, talk to me a little bit about this film. So this you've done. You did other films where you'd written other films before. Yeah. So I, you I did, started like, shorts with and stuff. shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I started doing shorts and um and I was kind of like. Hmm, I, I I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying writing and producing and making mistakes and then you know learning and getting better. And um, I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do a feature. And I, you know, had a team that I pulled together, people that I knew from years ago and people that I knew and met and brought on and. And we made three bound. Was this were these people that you had met doing the shorts before? So some were. Okay. Um, our makeup artist Jennifer Snowden actually was the first makeup artist I ever worked with as an actress on my first feature, and um, so that was pretty amazing to have a great team. But our team workshopped the script from the beginning. So uh, you know, I had you know, seven iterations, nine iterations of the script. And we've had many of the same actors kind of bring the characters to life. And it was great because they added so much depth and and dimension to the characters and really made them their own. So um, that was such a benefit. So uh, before we get too far into uh, the details, because I want to talk to you about the making Mm -hmm. of it and stuff, but... um, Tell us what the movie's about. Like, give us, the, give me the log line, like the Hollywood sure. log line about it. Um, so, Three Bound is about two newly single New Yorkers who meet at the worst possible time, right after really bad breakups, and they just hit it off. And rather than being a rebound relationship, they decide to sleep with three other people first and then give their relationship a shot. So what could possibly go wrong? I mean, it's the best plan ever. <laughs> it's a, when I when, so I have to admit, when I saw the film and I when I heard the premise of it, I was like, these are two of the craziest and or dumbest people I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, what I liked about it was it's a bit of a different take on the rom-com formula. Yeah. It's a bit of a dramedy because uh, it, it does seem to have uh, 
you have some real life uh, circumstances in there, and it, it does feel like these are real people. Uh, it's also a very New York movie, so uh, that I give a, a pass to a lot of uh, a lot of films that way, just because um, I live here. But um, and it does sound like something the two New Yorkers would do. It, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's it's like the Grubhub of dating. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I mean, New York has a very specific dating kind of rule set, I'd say. Um, it's pretty much there are no rules, so you can pretty much do whatever you want. And well, it's a bit like war or survivalist. Type, I mean, it's like know. the Hunger Games. <laughs> If you've ever dated anybody in New York City, you're like, oh, I, I'm going to run for the backpack. No, don't run for the backpack. So, um, but yeah, Matt and Sarah decide to run for the backpack and they may or may not make it out alive. One of the reasons I think you're, you're getting into festivals with it is it's, it's well acted, it's well written, um, it looks good. And, you know, the people seem like real people and it, it's relatable in that way, which, you know... <laughs> In a world of superhero films and blockbusters and car chases and explosions, you know, you don't see this much anymore. And like you, you only really see it in the indie world. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just, I, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll ask you about distribution later, but it, it's kind of the type of thing where I hope there's a market for it because, you know, somebody should be watching these films somewhere if they, if we can. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about kind of the, the, so you said you had workshopped the script uh -huh. beforehand. Yeah. What were some of the challenges of trying to put the movie together? I mean, how long of a go did you did you get with it? Did you try to shoot it in like three weeks, or was it something you did over time, or how did you do it? So um, we started with raising funds for a teaser, and we're like, we're going to raise funds for a teaser, and then people are just going to give us money. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so um, that was that was a lesson learned <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, but we did get fiscal sponsorship, which was huge in through IFP, which is an amazing organization, um, and that was huge in funding our film. And we had some private investors and things like that. So, um, but we made it on a very very low budget with um, eleven days of shooting. Wow. Yes. So you guys are humming along. I'm going to say, do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am in awe of and marvel at the lack of, of days that people have sometimes when I hear. Because I, I hear stories, oh, we did this movie in 12 days. We did this in 15 days. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this is kind of because we were talking about before we roll, but because of things like scheduling, mm -hmm. because of budget, yep. um, and just trying to get everybody at the same place at the same time, yeah. uh, you're, it, it's, it's like this war of attrition of like, how, how can I get this movie done before my time runs out kind of thing, you know? It, it's, it's like herding cats, yeah. basically. You're like, this person will do this job for not much money, but they're amazingly talented and generous, um, but they can only do it two days. <laughs> you're like, okay, we'll make it work. Now, was this your directorial debut? Because you co-directed this, so you 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 did this, you tag team this one. Yes, okay. yes. So uh, my co-director Daryl Ferrara, who's a wonderful, amazing partner and um, just as crazy as I am with taking this on, um, was amazing. I would not have been able to do it without his ideas and his talent um, and also just the physical being of Daryl because I was also in Three Bound. I play Sarah Barnes. Um, so so the built-in challenge right there. It was definitely challenging, um, but well worth it. Um, I learned a ton. I made a ton of mistakes, of course, but that's that's how you grow, and um, I embrace that, and I'm super proud of it. Were there things that you kind of learned making the film that you like? What? Tell me, tell me the bad stuff. Like, what's the one thing you'll never do again <laughs> if you try if you try to make another movie? If you try to direct another, movie, what's the one thing you're like? I'm not doing that again. That was a big, you know, oh, big gosh. no. Oh gosh, this is where I come up with something really clever to say that's <laughs> charming but doesn't really answer the question. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that uh, the biggest takeaway that I learned was how important it is to to really nurture your team. And it's a strength of mine, and it's something that I pride myself on. I think that the business has this um, 
this we're just known for being kind of cutthroat with you know how you get jobs and how transactional it is and uh, I think everybody fell in love with doing this art because they love the relationships they love collaborating they love building something together and film is unlike any other art form because everybody's voice, everybody's talent contributes to this final product. And I think that I, I, I really nurture an environment where people take great risks with their art. So if it's costumes, if it's lighting, if it's our, our sound designer, you know, everybody feels like they are empowered to build this world with me. Um, and I think that uh, that's something that I'd like to continue to build. And insist upon. Now, uh, now the, the follow-up question to that is, I'm assuming you knew that because you had been in environments that didn't do that previously. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to be surrounded in, like, day jobs, but also in this business um, with really switched-on people who are great at that, you know? So I've had the pleasure of working with some pretty incredible people. So I like to focus on the positive people that I've worked with um, who build these relationships and these environments. Of course, everybody's had that person that you're like, ooh. I find it, especially for actors, like I was in a situation one time where I was kind of, I was helping somebody out on a movie, and I, I played a small role in it. And I hadn't acted in a really long time. And I was feeling a little bit insecure, I'll, I'll admit it. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like, um, get to the set. They were doing my thing first. Everybody gets there, and the assistant director's there. Now, the director, who I knew, was, like, off watching video somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so alone. And they were like, okay, go, do it. And I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Yeah. Can I talk to the director for five seconds? Yeah. Like, I know you guys are on a schedule, but Jesus, I don't know, you know. And and you just feel like you got a gun to your head. Absolutely. You know? But it's, it's um, like, I remember Stanley Kubrick was talking about this. He said that, like, it, it's the most important part of the process in production, but it's the process that they make you rush through the most. Yeah, it's true. Um, and a lot of it has to do with money, yes, but it's like, this is where you're going to get the good stuff. So, you know. But it's always going to be money. Somebody said it's money or time. And sometimes you don't have either. Right. But, you know, you have to think about why do you do this? Like, why do we work so hard to, to get these jobs, to, to make these films? And, you know, it should be something like because of the collaboration, because of the team, and of course because of the art. But, you know, you're not going to get one without the others. Yeah, I've, um, I, I've, kind of built a, a family around me and people I work with all the time and you know uh, it is it's scary to kind of bring new people into the fold yeah but it only takes like if you're out there if, if you're a person out there and you, you want to get a job uh, I'll tell you this from my experience and you probably agree with me yeah it doesn't take much to get a bad reputation mm -hmm. or to be that yeah, that impossible to person to work yeah. with. So, you know, don't be that person. No, <laughs> that don't thing. be that person. You Nobody know? wants that person. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if you've encountered them once, you're like, nope, never again. I'm not dealing with so-and-so. Whether it's on the talent in front of the camera yeah. or somebody behind the camera, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's true. With this picture, too, so you, you're trying to, God, bang this out in 11 days. How are you able to kind of schedule that tight enough because I'm assuming you're shooting like multi locations in a day. Mm -hmm. So were you kind of sort of running and gunning it? Was everything yeah. handheld? Like how does it work? So we had, I think it was something like 40 locations, something like that. A lot of which we were very creative with combining um, using different locations for multiple reasons, but it was a lot of running and gunning. A lot of um, my favorite photos from set are us like wheeling the wardrobe cart down like Second Avenue. <laughs> Wait, so you're doing multiple locations, but they're not on the other side of town from one another. We were pretty smart with scheduling yeah. that. Um, you know, we weren't going to be in Brooklyn and then grab everybody and throw people in cabs and Ubers and then, you know, try to make it to the West Village like yeah. it's just an impossibility and it's actually just not fair to the team right um, and it's know, also gets expensive doing that forget it you know, <laughs> one of the things that I always tell people is factor in transportation when mm -hmm. you're talking about budgets because it's one of those things that nobody thinks about yeah. until they have to do it and you're like wait where'd all this money come from you know because especially if you're shooting in a city like New York it's 
parking, yeah. cabs, mm-hmm. you know, tickets. What, I mean, yeah, what? <laughs> traffic tickets, parking tickets, <laughs> all of that stuff. Um, and you know, next thing you know, you're like, wait, wait where, how do we, how yeah. do we go over? Well, you know, there you go. Yeah. Um, that and food, and you know, food and the ten percent contingency in your budget is always really yeah. important. So, so you're doing multiple locations, but they're like down the block. From one um, down the block, around the corner, um, our associate producer, Liz, was really great with kind of getting everything in the same proximity and, um, you know, begging and borrowing and stealing for locations. We've had such generous people. They're like, yes, you can film here between this time and this time. And we're like, thanks so much. <laughs> Did you get like a situation where, because there's a lot of bars like in the movie. Mm-hmm. Did you use one bar for multiple bars? Or were um, you able to use one bar per bar? I'm trying to think of, uh, generally, I think there was only one that we used for multiple multiple locations. The other ones were pretty much, yeah, pretty much just one 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 scene or a, a couple scenes and that's it, yeah. I think um, one of the things I, I liked about the film was the look. And when you're going that fast, like, how are you able to light and, you know, because... The one cool thing about New York bars is that they look like New York bars. Seriously. If you're shooting in, like, if you're if you're not trying to like shoot, uh, you know, Kansas for New York, mm-hmm. it's much easier. Where you like, because I would assume that you didn't have to dress those places a lot or do a lot with them in that way. We were fortunate. Um, our uh, our production designer Elise was amazing, and our DP Andrew was just exquisitely talented, as well as our our crew. I mean, Zach, who is our gaffer, Ian, who is our gaffer, they were just like so speedy and um, resourceful. (laughs) So um, it made the days very smooth and not too crazed. Had um, had you had this type of experience before on the shorts, or was this kind of like the first time you're shooting so this many locations and trying the to like sh- this this much material? Kind yeah, of no, the shorts were. Um, you know, my first short was they had two locations, <laughs> right? And uh, my second short was one location, two locations. So yeah, no, this was the first crazy amount of locations that I've done. I find that if you're gonna do that sort of thing, like people with commercial experience are usually pretty good Mm -hmm. because they know how to move. And like when I was on a commercial, I think we shot three locations or four in a day, Yeah, you know, and you know, they they weren't that far from one another. So you're not not spending that much time in the van kind of thing, but you know, you're you're humming Mm -hmm. through those scenes. Mm -hmm. My other question is, when you're moving that fast, in terms of your prep time, were you guys able to rehearse at all? Did you do any of that? Because you've got a lot of talky, yeah. dialogue-heavy stuff. Yeah. And this film hinges on the acting. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all mm-hmm. about the acting and the writing. Yeah. If either one of those things falls down, uh, the movie falls down. Um, so did you guys rehearse beforehand? Did you able to do that? Or? Um, a- According to SAG, no, we did not. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone. That's, that's the that's the official um, answer right there. So kids. we may have gathered at my according apartment. to the union, they did not rehearse. <laughs> no, um, you know we had the benefit of workshopping the script for a while. So you know not only did we build a working relationship with these actors, but we built these characters and we built personal relationships with each other. So you know that kind of goes back to building a, a collaborative team that really our friends so that's an added bonus as far as chemistry goes but um you know jason uh jason griffith who's an actor uh in three bound he plays matt um the co-lead um <laughs> he and i have known each other for years just uh, just like walter hoffman um pretty much most of the cast i've known so um, it happened really organically that we worked on it. I think that helps a lot. And th- you can see that there's uh, – because in this situation, too, it's very – I've said this on the show before about acting. It's very hard to fake chemistry. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you can't really. Um, and you guys you guys do have really good on-screen chemistry. Like, you seem like people who would like each other, whereas, as opposed to two people that a director told to like each other, <laughs> you know, which uh, I've seen before. And well, it's thanks. Like, it doesn't, Thank you. Like, if you've ever seen uh, – I remember being, years ago, being in a production of Romeo and Juliet, and the director literally, like, smacking himself on the forehead and going, this doesn't mean anything if Romeo and Juliet don't love each other. 
seriously. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you should have spent more time in casting trying to get two people who had more chemistry. Absolutely. You know? And listen, I don't want to like glaze over the fact that our cast is just insanely talented. They're they're a, a group of actors that are they just ooze talent and you know you could give them garbage and they'll be like they'll make it just so amazing and you know the performances are because of their talent i will say though that i i thought because especially in, in films like this where where they are pretty dialogue heavy and you're dealing with sort of real world situations and it's comedy and stuff like that I, i've said it a hundred times and i probably put it on my epitaph you cannot out act bad writing mm -hmm. you know like if the writing is not there uh, yeah. You know, you can't outrun bad writing. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like, like the people who were supposed to be your friends felt like your friends, the, the relationships and stuff like that. And, you know, you have to do stuff here, too. One of the things I also wanted to ask you about is you have some intimate scenes in this. Mm. You've got people in bed. And it's not, like, graphic or anything. And as far as I know, you, you're you not naked ever in the film. No. <laughs> um, but, you know, you do have these intimate scenes. Did you guys have, like, an intimacy choreography? Or, or was that all you? Like, how did you guys manage that stuff because I it's something that weirds me out yeah. and I always like where if I ever have to direct two people in a love scene I'm like oh crap you know yeah. like it, it's how, so how did you get through that stuff it's, it's a good question and you know as an actress actor female actress <laughs> whatever um, it's one of those things that you're confronted with through your whole career that you have to you know take it on and, and learn how to navigate it and then to put myself behind the camera um, you know first and foremost it's m most important that everybody is comfortable and that you know you create boundaries that everybody kind of adheres to so that the scene can play out in a safe way where everyone can take risks safely if that <laughs> yeah. too much of a an oxymoron but you know you can go there but still feel comfortable as a performer um so i feel like that's kind of we didn't have anyone per se like an intimacy coordinator or um, anyone like that but they're like stunt coordinators I feel like that's yeah. such a, a cool job description <laughs> yeah I, I, I think they're needed in movies too yeah. like I would well I mean you know. all joking aside yes of course um, but uh, it's it's something that like I said as a female in this industry you ha you're confronted with and you're in some of these scenes so are you trying to direct them and be in them or are you leaving that to your co-director I left that to him okay. um, you know to, to kind of be in some of those moments as an actor it would be kind of impossible to juggle both and given our time constraints you know to, to kind of that's what it says because you're moving so it, fast it too. wouldn't it wouldn't have it would have just been kind of pushing us back so trusting him enough which of course I did um, you know made made it possible for for anybody out there kind of looking to do this say they're an actor and they want to direct their move into their first feature um, which is uh, you know like doing that we were talking about before like this is it's it's a choice people make and a lot of times it's mm -hmm. out of necessity or it's like um, it's a now or never situation but like what advice would you give somebody kind of attempting to walk this particular tightrope that is a good question. I guess, you know, I I read Ed Burns' book, um, which I highly recommend, not pushing anything, but... Um, Ed Burns, the director of uh, Brothers McMullen, yeah, and yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I, he, he wrote something like, you know, choose your crew, um, the, choose the people that you'd want to be in the trenches with. And I felt like that is such fantastic advice because that's literally what you're doing. You're, you know, trying to make your day. You have all this stuff. All this stuff goes wrong. And you're like, what are we going to do? And how are we going to do it? And, you know, choose your crew, the people that you want to be in the trenches with and that you want to have fun with and go have a beer with afterwards. Yeah. And then hopefully after the first experience, I'll still want to work out with you on the second one. I mean, fingers crossed, nobody's <laughs> nobody's giving me a call back. So yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, uh, what's next for the movie at this point, uh, distribution wise? You, you guys, when we met, you're we doing the festival circuit. Yep. Are you still so doing that now? We're or? still we're, we're still waiting on um, a couple of festivals and then, uh, you know, I don't want to say like ruling things out, but I think most likely we'll find a home uh, with like VOD or something like that. Yeah, that's kind of the space where uh, these types of movies are, mm -hmm. are ending up, and I think it's good. Like I think it, it's 
it's given new life to indie films. Absolutely. Uh, especially comedies, straight comedies and straight dramas yeah. that don't have either huge names in them or, or you know, no superheroes or explosions kind of thing. But that's great. Uh, to wrap up, uh, if people want to know more about the film, they want to know about you, where can they find you on the web? Yes, they can go to kateforsets.com and um, threebound.com for uh, information on the film. Thanks so much for being here, and uh, thank you all out there for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. For more episodes of the show, you can always find them on our website, noresttheweekendpodcast.com. We're also on all the major podcast apps, whichever one is your favorite. Hit subscribe there, listen every week. And uh, we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash weekend. And now, uh, Behind the Rabbit Productions has just created our own uh, channel on footprint.tv, which is an app that you can download. Uh, and uh, all of the episodes are going to be there, along with all of our other stuff. So if you want to check out uh, more stuff from Behind the Rabbit, it's all there. Uh, once again, just want to give a, a quick thanks to Kate for coming. Thanks, Kate. Um, great having you on the show. I thought this was really insightful. For uh, Behind the Rabbit Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.